first let me show you the configuration on the upstream switch and see what it looks like. So here we already have a port channel configured and we will be using interface uh, 19, 20, 21, 22. So let's take a quick look at the interface 19. You can see it's just a regular dot one Q trunk. And if you show run interface port channel 10, so we have pretty much the same thing, but one thing to note here is you configure the port channel interface as if it's connected to the AIN host. So since the Nexus 1KV is not running spanning tree, so you basically put all those standard spanning tree, port fast trunk, BPDU filter, BPDU guard enable. Okay, so here we have two port channel and it's in the standalone state right now since we have not really configured the uplink for each of the ESXi hosts yet. Okay, so now going back to the vCenter, if you go ahead and try to add the host at this time, let's go click and then VM, go next, not to migrate anything at this point. And you see it fails right now. And that's because if you were to, right now we do not have the update manager enable. So that means if you guys are in the environment where you do not have the update manager, then the only, the only options you have is to do it manually. And the first thing you need to do is to copy the .vib file. Again, that's part of the package that you download from cisco.com to the ESXi. And first you need to enable SSH because it's going to be working over SFTP. So go back to the host and cluster. And for our ESXi number one, that we were going to be using the, do it, install the VIM manually. Go to security profile and then property under SSH, we'll click option, and then we'll just want to start it just one time. Okay, okay. Then with our, we're going to be using Win SCP to do SFTP the file. And go to 32.4, username, login. All right, and then you can select the file. So go to, for us, it's on the desktop. And go to software, we have the, this is the package right here. So when you unpack it, you will see these direct, different directories. So go under VAM. You can see this here, this three different dot VIB. So you need to know which VIB that is compatible to your version of ESXi. For us, we use the 5.1 and we know it's going to be this file right here. But well, you can pretty much look that up on the Cisco documentation. So let's copy that over, copy. And now we need to SSH to our ESXi. And just to confirm the file is there under the temp directory. And then we're going to run a command, which I was just going to copy and paste to so make sure there's no typo. That's going to install the VAM software to the ESXi. Okay, so this is command ESXi CLI software VIB install, and then just point it to the location of the .VIB file. Okay, so enter. Okay, so now it says finished successfully. And to verify, you can do VM status dash B. And what you're looking for is right here, VM agent is running. So now if we go back to the vCenter and trying to add the host to our Nexus 1KV one more time with the add host. We'll specify uplinks. And we want to definitely want to migrate the VM kernel that the VAM is going to use. Otherwise, it can't, you would not be able to communicate with the VSM. And make sure you select the port group or port profile that has that layer 3 control or L3 control capability command is in. But we might as well move all of these VM kernel interface as well. So this one is 32, which is the management interface of the ESXi. Next one is 60, which is iSCSI. And Last one has to be the 59, which is the B motion. Okay, so we'll click next. Let's leave the single virtual machine. Let's leave that not to migrate for now, and we'll do it manually after this. So we'll click next, and we'll click finish. And let's bring this up. Yep, you can see since we have the term on, on it scroll right past us pretty quickly. 
But if we scroll up, right here it said module three is online. Okay, with uh, several V Ethernet attached. So if we just show module, you'll see now that we have a third module, which is our VAM on the ESXi1. If we just show interface virtual, you will see all the virtual Ethernet interface that was attached. And these are all the VM kernel interfaces that we just migrated. Okay, just to finish it off, we, that's manually migrated the rest of our VM that's currently on sitting on the vSwitch1. So go back to host. Actually, it's done on the networking. Then you right click. Instead of add host, we do manage host. And here's the one host that we have added already. We'll leave that default. That is already in the correct port groups. And that leaves us with the VM themselves. So first is the Nexus 1 KV primary that we're going to move to VLAN 111 for port groups 112. The third interface doesn't really matter if you you can just put that on one of the VLAN that's available. As I said, let's put that on 112 as well. For the vCenter, it's already on VLAN 32, so make sure that stays on VLAN 32. So 32. It's our test machine, again 32, and our jump box. There are two interfaces, so we just want to do VLAN 32 here. Two. Okay, so next and finish. So let's make sure we still have connectivity. So this one is the test server at the IP of 32.42 that we just moved over to Nexus 1000V. Trying to ping internet. You can see we still have connectivity, so let's keep that ping going. But if you now go back to the host and networking. If you look at vSwitch1, you will see we do not have any more, whether there's VMs or VN kernel interface on the vSwitch1, since everything has been moved to the distributed uh, switch. And if you go to our command line here and do show interface virtual one more time, now we have additional VETH interfaces shows up, since we have now migrated all those VMs over. Okay, so now we have one remaining VEM to install. But this time, we're going to use the update manager. And again, just to prove the, just to prove that, that we need the update manager, if you no longer want to SSH that .vib file into the ESX, we're going to try to add the host and make sure it failed before we enable update manager. So our last remaining host is 32.6. Next, we're going to Again, just leave everything by default right now, and now we're failing. So now what we need to do on the plugin, you can see that we currently do not have Update Manager listed in the list of plugins, but we already have the Update Manager installed on the third on the machine right here. We just need to kind of force it to connect to the vCenter since we have it disconnected right now. And I'm going to go under the Update Manager folder. Again, I already have the script ready just to save times. And then we're just going to run one command that forced the update manager to connect to the vCenter. Okay, so you can see it's completed. Go to the vCenter, close that. You can see on the activity tab or section down here, there's an add tag, and that was initiated by VC Integrity, which is the update manager. So we've go back to the plugin. Now we see the update manager extension shows up, which means the update manager is ready to go. And we can now proceed with adding our last host or install the VM on our last host. The rest of this is, is pretty much the same as the one we did previously. Now you can see we just basically skipped the step of SSHing the .veb into the ESXi. And let's migrate all these interfaces. Again, let's make sure that it gets mapped to the correct VLAN. That one is 60, that one is 59, and the last one is VMK control. Next, we only have one VM on our ESXi host, or ESXi2, and that's a secondary VSM. 
So let's map that to the correct VLAN. And again, adapter three the third interface is the interface uh, packet interface, and that can just map to any VLANs. Next, finish. One good thing about using Update Manager also is you don't have to kind of figure out which .vib file you need or is compatible to your ESXi vSphere version. The Update Manager kind of figure all that out for you and it just saves you additional time from having to do that. And you can see there's a lot of activity going on right now on the tab down below. And we're just going to have to wait until everything has become completed. Okay, we can go back to our host and cluster and check and see if everything has been moved off of the vSwitch one. You can see the secondary VSM is not there anymore. If you switch to the distributed switch, you can see that, uh, for example, VLAN 32 here, it's got the VM current event management IP on, for example. Okay, so it looks like the activity has kind of stopped. So we can try to see, go back to uh, command line and do show module just to make sure everything still look correct. So yes, we still have the secondary VSM on HA standby and now we have our fourth module which is the VM of the ESXi2. You can see right here there's a name as well. Okay, now if you do show interface virtual, now we have even more virtual Ethernet interface after we have migrated the or added the ESXi2 to the Nexus 1000V. Okay, last thing we want to also check is the port channel status. The port channel summary, their LP, which is good. And we should also see the same results on the upstream switch. Okay, so LHCP is working as well. Now let's do some testing. We're going to move or use our test machine at 32.42. So let's check and see where it's sitting right now. So show interface virtual. I'll look for 42. You can see right now it's on the ESXi one at the IP of 32.4 with the virtual ethernet number five. And what we are gonna do is to vMotion that host, which is right here, to our ESXi2. So migrate, want to change host, do a host vMotion, and done. Okay, looks like the vMotion is completed. And we can go back and check our ping windows here, and you can see we didn't really lose any ping during that vMotion. And if you go back to the command line and check the location of that VM, right now you can see it's been moved to 32.6, although the ethernet interface number never change. Okay, so that's one major benefit of using Nexus 1000V is regardless of the location of the VM, as far as the VSM is concerned, it's still connected to the same port. And that means all the configuration that's attached to that port is maintained, whether it's ACL or QoS, or even if you would actually set up this port as a span port. Okay, so now you can see with the Nexus 1000V in layer three mode, you don't need to have the VSM and VEM sharing the same VLAN anymore. So basically the location of the VM can be pretty much anywhere in your data center. Okay, so you can see that using the OVA actually saves you a little bit more time compared to the, if you were to install it manually using the ISO, which actually there's not really a reason to do that anymore with the OVA, but just keep in mind that when you do the OVA with the installer of the first two option, so right here, right here, the first, so the first two option by default will put the VSM in the layer three mode. If you, for some reason, wants to do layer two, you can go with the manually configure option like we saw in this video, and as part of the setup process, you'll be prompted and asked if you want to do layer two or layer three, or you can go ahead and do the installer, but once everything is installed in the command under the SVS domain, you can manually switch it back to layer two. Or the last option is obviously to install the VM manually using ISO, and then you'll be prompted to choose to do layer two also. Okay, so that's pretty much wraps up our video on the Nexus 1000V installation with layer three mode. Thank you for watching labminutes.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.